So why is max force important? Uh, this causes uh, greater deformation uh, due to reversal um, muscle action. Let's look at the stretch shortening cycle by a stretch reflex action. Now, the, when you run, it's all about the foot, right? So the, the plantar flexors of the foot are stretched during the first part of the support period and shortened on the second part. So in other words, when I, if I had a ball to demonstrate, I could push it. Like if I, if I was to push this down, see how it flattens out? Then it was, see how it flattens out and it springs back up? That's exactly what your foot does. So um, we'll get into this later, but we do an enormous amount of training for connected tissue. But people do not understand this. Hundreds and hundreds of repetitions for elbow extensions, knee extensions, ankle work, foot work, so forth, lower back work. So that's why we don't have injuries at our, at our gym. Um, all right, this can be explained if you want to see it uh, in the practice of science of strength training. So. It, like I said, it can be shown by bouncing a ball. Now, if you look at, um, it, it, like I said, in, in, if you look at uh, Hooke's law of elasticity, um, the law basically states uh, that the amount of deformation produced by a force is proportionate by the force by amount of force. So, equal and opposite effect, right? Now, when you increase this force, you must you must increase kinetic energy through the eccentric phase. Now, that's why, um, like I said, ground force is important. Maximum ground force, minimal ground contact. The only between running and flying is ground contact. You know, hopefully, you could go. So you're barely on it because you're on the ground. You're not going anywhere. And um, uh, and a lot of people don't understand this. Um, Ninety percent of the ability of the force to run down a race is vertical because you have to overcome gravity. Only 10% of that work is horizontal. And when you, like Dr. Romanoff, you're familiar with Dr. Romanoff in pose training? Dr. Romanoff talks about using gravity to assist you down the track. And exactly right. I mean, if you stand up and, and fall forward, you're, go, you, you're gonna put your feet on you, or you're gonna fall on your face. So that's all it is, is falling forward um, at the correct angle and putting your feet in front of you every time. Now, now we're going to get into weight training. And any questions so far basically about the mechanics of how you run? So it's stride length, ground force, minimal ground contact is what makes a person run. All right, that's why you do fast foot drills, you become more powerful. You have to use weights. And now we're going to get into the weights like the graph here because this is a dynamic method. And um, I want to talk about the dynamic method, which basically means motion. So there we want accelerating strength. And if you just go, like I said, we, I won't go back over this, but if you look at the charts, you know, this explains it. I'm, I mean, listen, I took this, this is a plan from a 400 to a thousand. Is this, is this a title? No. This was an experiment. At 15 years old, Dave Hall squatted 400. At 19 years old, in a contest, he squatted 1,005. And this was the plan that he used. Now, um, this gentleman here squats 400 pounds. And that gentleman there squats 500 pounds. So you say, okay, I'm taking a shortcut. I'm going to use his weights. You're going to use his 500 pound sub-maximal weights to squat, to catch up with him. It will not work because your bar speed will be not great enough. You understand? This is mathematics. Weights, all sports are mathematics, physics, and biomechanics. Biomechanics first, learn how to do it, and then apply physics and mathematics. All right. In America, you know, you look at the coaches, there's where you see your great coaches on the ESPN and the bowl games and at the final four. Your greatest coaches in America should take, start with 10 year olds. If you don't start on the right track, you'll never end up on the right track. Now, if you go overseas to the Soviet Union, um, they all have it's called the rule three. We would all go to if, if you're halfway smart, they put you in a university, uh, you know, when you're young, seven, seven eight years old. And we all do all type of general fit, general GPP, general physical preparedness work. And then they would determine you should wrestle, you should play baseball, he should play basketball, you should box, and by psychological exams and physical qualities that you have. Then they start you at 10 years old. And, if, and I, I have a weightlifting book coming out real soon, it explains all this. Also a track book. Um, and it's all the same. Uh, at 10, you have phases 10 to 12, 12 to 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21, you're polished or you're gone. So see, as you go, it's just like anything else. You must get better as those two year periods go. If you, it, it, you just don't pass you into the next grade like they did me in school. You, if you're not physically able to move on, you're out of the program. All right? It sounds stern. And I watched the show with old Soviet professors didn't like it because a lot of the smart kids that didn't have money over there didn't have the opportunities that athletic kids did. And I can understand that. You know what I mean? And, uh, but you know, the, the Klitschko brothers both have PhDs. So a lot of, you know, a lot of Soviet athletes you see on TV, UFC, these aren't dropouts. These are very smart guys. We got one in our gym. What's he got? A phys physics degree, Dimitri? Can't understand a word he says, but he's got a physics degree. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, I think that's what he said. I'm not sure. Okay, but we always run things in three week waves. The reason for that, your body runs in bio, bio, biomechanical ways of um, 21 to 23 day, ways, days. It goes up for um, 11 or 12 and down 11 or 12. Up 11. But in my world's worst day, I can do this program. And how bad I feel. And, uh, and on, the, on the third week, you can do, you can do this in, in, with ease, hopefully, you know. Okay, now, um, and we use this first. You can use this chart for anything. Squatting, I mean, you know, it starts at 400, but let's say you got a power clean. I've done it for everything. Um, you know, it's, it's funny in America, I, I'm writing a, a book about weightlifting because we're, we're so bad at it. It's the worst American sport going to the Olympics, which they don't get anyone on the A team that there is. We excelled every sport that I can think of women's gymnastics, men's gymnastics, basketball, football, softball. Uh, you name it, right? Soccer, but weightlifting, we suck. And they got every excuse in the world. And um, well, they got the same athletes I do. And why do I have the world's strongest gym? Why, why is that? Because it's the coaches. You got more coaches. I hope there's, if there's coaches here, come on up here. I'll take you on. Um, but you're going to be as good as your coach. And if you can't coach, you, you, there's a lot more than technique. You know, uh, you take uh, the greatest fighters in the world. Right now, they talk, uh, I believe it's a 122. He can't be one of the Klitschko's. <laughs> Technique's okay, and but you have to have massively strong body to lift 500 pounds over your head. And um, everyone, they'll tell you, they always have a coach and they, I'm off the beat here a minute, but they talk about teaching technique and weightlifting. I don't even know why they got a coach. You know, it's kind of that complicated. I've seen eight-year-old girls do a full snatch. Have you, I've seen it. So it can't be that freaking complicated. You need training partners, not, not um, coaches, as far as I'm concerned. Someone to push you. What's the two words? Motivate or aggravate. That's a training partner. Someone who wants to kick her ass every freaking day and he wants to kick your ass. If you guys ever read anything about what Dave Tate said about me, you know, you, you could have him arrested. Yeah, you've read it, huh? Yeah. Same here. I'll outlive that. You know, <laughs> I'll live them. All right. Now, let's go into maximal strength. Max effort. A lot of guys confuse this with uh, heavy effort. Max effort means it's plural. One rep. You, 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 if you lift in power meets or weightlifting contest, you do one rep. You, you don't do twos and threes. Um, that builds strength endurance. So we work up. What we do is, you notice this chart here is high volume. If you just go down the bottom, um, I'll, I'll, I'll roll this off real quick. 600 pound squatter, and this is the way it is, you do 7,200 pounds of volume all the time. You see how this works? Constantly 7,200 pounds of volume until you move up. And you'll notice every time you jump 50 pounds, the volume goes up 500 pounds. And it goes up 500 pounds all up to 1,000 pounds. When the guy's training with, um, you know, six, 500 and 600. All right? But if I was to, so you see 7,200 pounds on max every day, maximal intensity, 101%, break a record, as fast as possible, the lowest amount of volume. Um, I just wrote this up, and you can add it up, and it's going to come up real quick. If I was going to deadlift, uh, if I was going to squat 605 here in the contest, two and a quarter for a couple reps, 315 for one, 451, uh, 495 for one, 560 for one, 605 for a PR. You add that up, it's about 24 pounds. 
Now, in weightlifting, it's called the rule of 60. Um, they basically would do 60% of the volume on the second workout. Powerlifters are different because where they're making 20, you know, 22 pound jumps, we're making 90 pound jumps, 45, 45, 40. So it really comes down to the rule of 50 or rule of 40. You know, like I said, 2,400 pounds versus uh, um, 6,000. You go, well, that's, you know, guys, well, that's no work. Well, you know, I got a record, didn't I? Did I get a record? I got a record. Hey, Chubb boy here, he went from, what'd you go, from five and a quarter to eight, it's 850, a little over a year. What, your squat's going from seven, when you come and you, what'd you have, a seven and a quarter, made seven, six, five, three, and now what have you done? Well, yeah, how long? Yeah, same thing, about a year. This stuff works. It's all mathematics. If all the mathematics, it works. Um, but yeah, you see how this weight training works? So if you're a sprinter, because I, if this is a sprinter, I don't want to gain it 20. If he gains 20 pounds, he's got to get massively stronger to overcome gravity. And, um, and I want to get in why we have to use weights. You know, when a guy, a Bolt, and several other top sprinters, you know, everybody goes, weights will hurt you. Well, I've never hurt a person in my freaking gym, but I'll send my track girls out and they all get hurt. Invariably. I've had track people go, uh, I had a girl that could not qualify for national head top line for six years. 20, 26 years old. She's a coach. They brought her to me. Nine weeks she qualified. The amazing thing to me was, I thought that, I thought it was a joke to do the qualifying. Amazing thing was she couldn't understand she wasn't hurt. She could not understand she did not hairline fractures of, of the shins or something. I'm going like, this is insane. That's how they think. Half of the time of a track athlete is a being, uh, you're hurt. Am I right? And you know why? Okay, I'll tell you why. Because they're all afraid of weight training. One, they may not have to live. You need to get a real weight coach. No, not a, no, I don't teach track. I don't teach boxing. We teach the boxers how to get stronger. But because when a guy like Bolt runs, he produces 1,000 pounds of force on each step. Do you know that? So, if he, and he's an exception. It, it takes 41 steps for him to run a race. Other 100 meters, 43 and 5. He's putting up 41,000 pounds of work under 10 seconds. Now, if you take one of my big boys, it's quite a thousand. You know, and it'll take him a good 20 minutes, and he would do 12,000 pounds of work. So which one seems more logical? You know, 41, I mean, it is a bit over overuse. 41,000 pounds in 10 seconds or 12,000 pounds in 20 minutes. You want to get strong, you're going to get stronger with the weights. Cut out most of this running. You know, in this, I mentioned this 5K race and, and dropping by, by 25 seconds. Also recommended in the study is to drop running 35%. Any idiot can run. Once you learn how to run, you can run. You have to get stronger, more powerful. And it, it, it applies to three things. Max effort, um, the speed training, you know, the explosive strength, maximum acceleration or maximal effort. <clears throat> okay? 